Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. This is 10 exam prep questions with full audio explanations. You can head over to electricalexamcoach.com to learn all about these concepts step by step. Before we get started, if you'll hit that subscribe button, it'll help us share and impact more people. Now let's talk about the best way to use this resource. So I'm going to read the questions one at a time. Right after I'm done reading them, pause the video and try to answer it yourself. And then unpause the video and you can watch a full detailed explanation. Let's get to it. What is the total demand for 11 5200 watt dryers using the standard method? The correct answer is 26,884. So for this one, we're going to start off by heading to table 220.54. We're going to start on the left-hand side, and we're going to find our number of dryers. Then we're going to come over and tee off with our demand factor in percentage. Let's look how this math bears out. First, we find our total known load. We take our 11 dryers, multiplied by 5,200 each, and that gives us 57.2. Now, we're going to head to our table and get our demand factor. The demand factor for 11 dryers is 47%. So we take our original load multiplied by our demand factor. Then we get our new reduced load of 26,884. What is the minimum size grounding electrode conductor for a service with three yacht copper ungrounded conductors? The correct answer is number four. The first thing we ask ourselves is, does it mention the type of electrode? No, it doesn't. So we're going to head to table 250.66 and use it at face value. If the question did mention the type of electrode, we would first head to section 250.66 and check in A, B, or C to see if our specific type of electrode is mentioned and then use the, va uh, the value inside that paragraph. In this case, we're just going to use the table. We start on the left-hand side because our ungrounded hots are in copper, and then we need to be careful to cross over to select a copper grounding electrode conductor. And in this case, we select a number four. Great job. How many RHH 6-gauge conductors can fit into a 1-inch PVC Schedule 40 conduit? The correct answer is 3. So we're going to head to our Annex C Start Here table, which is at the very beginning of Annex C. Then we're going to start on the left-hand side, and we're going to find our type of conduit. We're going to come down, and then we're going to come across the page until we get into the page number column. Then we're going to tee off with our page and head there. When we get to the page, we're going to start on the left-hand side and find our type of insulation. Then we're going to come to our wire size. Then we're going to come across the top and find our size conduit and come down and tee off with the number of conductors that we can fit into this one-inch piece of Schedule 40. What size short circuit ground fault protection would you select for a 7.5 horsepower, 120 volt, AC single phase motor terminating to 75 degree C terminals with a nameplate FLA rating of 71 amps using a dual element fuse. The correct answer is a 150. So for this one, we're going to be using table 430.248 for single phase and we're going to find our FLC. So we start on the left hand side and find our horsepower and then come down and tee off with our respective voltage and we will find our FLC which in this case is 80 amps. Now we're going to head to table 430.52 and we're going to find our multiplier. So we start over here on the left hand side and find our type of motor, which is single phase. And then we come across here until we find our type of device, which is a dual element fuse. And we find that the multiplier is 175%. Then all we have to do is do the math. We take our original FLC multiplied by 1.75 and that gives us a new amperage of 140 amps. Now we're going to head over to table 240.6a and choose the next standard size up. We're allowed to choose the next size up when we're doing short circuit ground fault protection. And the correct answer is 150. What is the total demand for 13 5,000 watt dryers using the standard method? The correct answer is 29,250. To find this answer, we'll head to table 220.54. We're going to start on the left-hand side until we find our number of dryers and then come over and tee off with our demand factor. In this case, it gets a little bit trickier, but let's break it down one piece at a time. First thing we do is we find our total load. 
we take our 13 dryers, multiply them by 5,000, and that equals 65,000. Then we head to our table. It says here that we are to take a 47% base and then minus 1% for each dryer past 11. We have 13 dryers, so we take 13 minus the 11 base, and that gives us a 2% difference, meaning that we have a 2% reduction off of the 47% base. We take our 47% base, we minus the 2%, that gives us a new demand factor of 45%. We take our 65,000 original total load, we multiply it by 45%, and that gives us a new reduced load of 29,250. What size copper wire would you select for a 105 amp load that's expected to run for three or more hours terminating the 75 degree C terminal? The correct answer is one op. So for this one, we're gonna take our starting ampacity and we're gonna multiply it by 125%. That's gonna give us a new known load of 131.25. We did the 125% because it's a continuous load. Then we're gonna to head to our primary opacity table. We're gonna to choose from the 75 degree C column in this case, because it states that we're terminating the 75 degree C terminal. Then we're gonna go down and we're gonna find a wire on the copper side that will cover our known load. And we're gonna select a one odd. What size aluminum wire would you select for a piece of equipment with a load of 95 amps terminating to 60 degree C terminals? The correct answer is one odd. For this one, we're gonna head to our primary opacity table. We're gonna look back at our question and be very careful to be on the right-hand side of this table because we're dealing with aluminum. And then we have to be doubly careful and make sure that we select from the 60 degree C side because they're 60 degree C terminals. And the correct answer is one odd. Let's get to it. What is the total demand for nine 4,800 watt dryers using the standard method? The correct answer is 24,750. We're gonna start out by going to table 220.54. We're gonna start on the left-hand side until we find our number of dryers. Then we're gonna come over and find our demand factor. Then we take our nine dryers and we multiply them by 5,000. 5,000 is the minimum for the standard method or the nameplate, whichever is greater. So we take nine multiplied by 5,000, that equals 45,000. Now we head to our table, find our demand factor, it's 55%. We take our original wattage multiplied by 0.55 and that equals 24,750. What is the total available wattage of a 20 amp 120 volt circuit? The correct answer is 2400. We're gonna use our simple math on this one. We take our amperage multiplied by our voltage and that equals our total VAs or our total wattage. We take 20 multiplied by 120 and that equals 2400. You will count each yoke or strap of a device as blank for your count when calculating Boxville. And remember, this is based off the largest size that is terminating to the device. So if you have a switch with 12 gauge wire to it, it's gonna count as number 12s. If you have in the same box, a switch with 14 gauge wire, that switch would count as 14s and the first switch would count as 12s. And each yoke or strap of a device is going to count as two based off the size wire that's terminating to the device. And to find this one, we're gonna to head to 314.16b. And I want us to do some strategic highlighting here if you are allowed to highlight in your code book. So when we get there, we get to 314.16b4 specifically. When we get to b4, I want you to highlight the words in the first line, each yoker strap, and then in the second or third line, depending on your code cycle, I want you to highlight the words double volume allowance. Then a few more lines down, I want you to highlight the words based off the largest conductor connected to the device. And then of course, go back up to part four and highlight the black bold heading. So your highlighting will read device or equipment fill, each yoker strap, double volume, based off the largest conductor that's terminated to the device. 